what a morning. I, be, I barely sat down, just been on my feet, on the go the whole time, just singing a bit of um, Lighthouse Family. I added it to um, the last live, and um, because of copyright infringement, if you can believe it, um, it cut the li Instagram cut the live, and it was for charity. And it's because I played um, the Lighthouse, the opening bars of the Lighthouse Family in the background of the live, and um, because of copyright, uh, Instagram cut it, and it was for charity. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? It's, it's strange to believe that probably some people died because of that, but, you know, it's uh, half, half, half a dozen of one, six of the other, but um, the Lighthouse family were able to protect their copyright, and I think that's the priority here. Yeah, the pri Warner Brothers who, or whoever, some small local little quirky little independent record label said, come on. Um, but um, yeah, people died. But um, the important thing is um, I couldn't play uh, about 16 seconds of the Lighthouse family. So that's the main thing. And that's what we can take away from that. I have it. Yes. Excuse me, it's my oldest. I don't know. Where did you last put it? No, I haven't touched... Well, I have to, I have to hoover your room because you'll get dust mites up your ass. <laughs> That's what they do, do. No dust mites up your, up your, up your, up your jack seat. All right. Off out. Teenagers, don't ask. <laughs> don't ask, don't tell. Don't ask, don't tell. Loose lips, sink ships. If these walls have ears, add ears. <laughs> if these walls add ears, I'd love to see the builder. <laughs> Oh dear. You have to laugh, I've actually kill yourself. Right. What a, what a morning I've had today. I must tell you before I start that ever I've had ever such a funny morning. I've come I come over all all queer this morning. Come over all dizzy. And um I went down to the post office, you see, to post a couple of letters. Me 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 middle one's living abroad now. He's in where is it? The, the, it's either it's either the Czechos the Czechos Republic or Holland, and I know it's somewhere in Eastern Europe. So it's either Holland or the Czechos Republic. But anyway, I took forward his post. God knows what that is. I didn't. I didn't ask. It was shut. <laughs> I did chuckle to myself. I thought I put. I took it down to the post office. I said, "Could you?" Um, went up to the counter, of course, and I said to the gentleman behind the counter, "I'm folding. I'm folding this to my middle son." See, he's uh, he's studying abroad. Couldn't wait to leave his mum. <laughs> he couldn't. He couldn't wait. You know, he said, "I'm." He said, "I'm off to uni." I said, "You're 12. He said, I, I, "Or he said, it, it doesn't matter where I'm going." He said, "I'm going somewhere." And I said, "Well, you 12. You, you know, I'm legally responsible." He said, "I can't be in this house." And I think that was his way of saying, "If I don't leave now, I don't know how I'll ever leave you." I think it was his way of saying, I'm blissfully happy. And you've given me a beautiful um, family home. And he said, I'm, he said, he said, I'm, I'm 12 years old. He said, I'm 12 years old, but I can't, I can't bear. He said, I, fi I find you suffocating. And that was, and that touched me because I thought to myself, I've been a good mum here. I've, been, I've, showed, I've showed him love. And she, he said to me, you're not listening. I'm not even in teenage years and you're, you're utterly overbearing. And I said, come here, you. I know what you want. You want a huggle. You, know, you want a huggle from Muggle, which is what I call myself, Mummy. I call myself Mummy Muggles. <laughs> and he loves that. And I can tell by the way, he, he kind of shuddered. You know, he kind of shuddered, shuddered and he... It sort of wretched a little bit, and I thought, oh, this is hurting. I haven't shown him enough love. I thought to myself, he's hurting here, he's hurting inside. And a bit of sick, actually, and he backed right into the corner, and he said, I just, I just can't, I'll never be able to form my own interpersonal relationships because you're so smothering. And I said, I know what he needs, a huggle. And I moved in and he actually sort of pushed me out of the way and he left it. And that was the last I saw of him. And I thought to myself, he's done well. As I say, not heard from him yet. That was, where are we now? 19, 
92. He, le he left now, so he'd be, how old would he be now? Good enough. And the maths was never a strong point, but he's, you know, he'd be in his 40s now. And um, yeah, but I, I, wish, I wish him all the best. And I'm always thinking about, I'm always forwarding my post. Um, quite often the postman said this, you know, I go into the post office, you see, and I go, I go up to the counter and I say, I've got a parcel from the boy. My middle one. He's he's gone to the Czechers, um, Czechers Republic or Holland, and the gentleman at the post office, ever such a nice man. Ever such a nice man. There's also a lady who works there, their family, who's not so nice. And quite often, when I'm in the queue and I can see that I'm going to get served by the lady before the man. If there's someone behind me, I sort of the little bit shake this. I go, "You go ahead. I'm not quite ready, and I'll fiddle with something in my purse, you know." With, I don't know, a bit of lipstick or a tampon or whatever. And I'll say, you go, you go straight in. You go ahead there. And I wait to see the man. So yeah, anyway, I go, I go and see the man. I was doing myself up a little bit. <laughs> I don't know, it's something about him. So that, but, and he says to me, um, he says, where do you, where do you want? He says, oh, hello. Sort of like that. You know, it's like, oh, hello, you back. I go, yeah, because I'm in the most stage, you see, and I um, always try and get him, always try and get him, get, get him to uh, talk to me. And so I went up to the counter and I said, hi, um, I have to post something to my middle son, my middle boy. You know? I have to post something to my middle boy. I said, it's very lonely in my house. And he said, um, he says, right, okay, where, where, what's the address? And I say, Holland or Czechos or Czechos Republic. He said, yeah, that's not, I mean, Czechos Republic isn't, isn't, a, isn't the place. Do you mean the Czech Republic? And I say, something like that. I said, something like that. And he says to me, well, you need a postcode. And I thought to myself, well, goodness me, that's, that's really, in a way, sums up this country to me. That sums up all of the problems with this country right there. He said, you're gonna need a postcode. I said, you're gonna need an attitude to change. Because I, I did turn on him that day and I regret it. I, t I turn on him most days, if I'm being honest with you, every day. Um, because that's not the way you treat the customer. He said, you're gonna need a postcode. I said, you're gonna need a new attitude, sweetheart. By this point, obviously, there's quite a queue behind me and I can see a few people tutting. Tutting at him, I assume, because um, that's not the British way. I said, you're going to have to change your attitude because that's not right. And he said, well, there's just no way the, the, the postal service, the Royal Mail will find the address if you just say a country. You know, if you just say a country, the name, it's very unlikely it's, it's going to get there. You know, it has to go through multiple sorting. I mean, by that point, I switched off. I thought, oh, God, I've gone, I've gone off this one. I thought to myself, I've, got, I've, I've, gone, I've gone off this one, I'll get back on the apps because this isn't, this isn't working for me. And it was the one day when I thought to myself, I'm not sure about this relationship. You know, and that hurts me to say that now, given that I'm, I'm now going back again. Anyway, I says to him, um, I, says, You're not, that, I said, let me tell you something before I go. He said, and he said to me, you're here every day. And you do the same thing every day. And I thought, uh, uh someone's flirting with me. <laughs> Dear. He said, you say the same thing every day. You'll hear it every day, sometimes two or three times a day. You come in with a parcel, say the name of a country and a random boy's name. Because sometimes I change my son's name because I'm like, believe it or not, this is absolutely terrible. I've forgotten it. <laughs> <laughs> showing my age sometimes I go it's I know it's something like Tom Paul Roger uh, I, I I remember him being born and I remember those years because as I say I was always trying to go in for a huggle anyway the gentleman behind the counter cut long story short but it is a long story he says to me um, he says you hear every day three times a day and he, he calls security over anyway and this is what will make you laugh anyway. Security guard comes over, you see. Security guard comes, comes over to me. Grabs, grabs him by collar. He says, you've got to leave. This is every day. I told you when you come in, is, is there a legitimate reason you're here today? And I said, yeah, I'm posting a parcel. It's kind of why people go to the post. <laughs> Memo to security guard. This is why people... I said, 
says, sometimes I turn up the door, he says, he says, what are you doing here today? This is the security guard, you see. I say, I'm playing around golf. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> he sort of raises his eyebrows like that. Like it's a, you know, and I can tell that, um, goodness me, he's flirting with me as well. Are these two gonna have a fight over me? <laughs> no, I'd hate that. I'd hate that. Two, go two guys fighting over little old me. Hmm. It's the security guard and the post office, and the man who runs the post office fighting over little old me. Oh God. No, I'd be blushing and all sorts. Oh, stop it. And then if everyone tried to break them up, no, because I'd want, I'd need, they need to get that out of their system. They need to get that out of their system. I'd probably dive in, try and break it up, but also give them a, give them a huggle. The security guard and the post office, give them a, ooh, let's have a group hug. Put me in the, put me in the middle. Put, the, put me in the middle of that hunk sandwich, you know? Be careful not to um, suffocate. But, uh, yeah. Huh. But anyway, so he says to me, you're here for a legitimate reason. I said, yeah, I'm playing around a golf. What about you? <laughs> I'm laughing and then, yeah, you know, you get the usual, you get the usual attitude behind me, the people in the queue, like, oh, why is she back? She's always here. You know, she's never here for legitimate business. So anyway, I, I, I queue up. And this has gone on now for... For, for a good a good 24 years and I think that he's got a thing for me the man who works in the post office there's just something about the way he there was something about the way he raises his eyebrows or quite often pulls the shutter down and I sort of peer around and I go mm, does he want me to come back there I'm not that kind of girl <laughs> although I could be convinced <laughs> Never look an opportunity, never turn down an opportunity. Never look a gift horse in the mouth. I think, uh, take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Horses for horses. <laughs> you can take a horse to water. Um, if these walls have ears, look before you leave. But anyway, um, anyway, I says to him, uh, anyway, quite often he pull, pull the shutter down or he'll, he'll, get the, he'll get his wife, his wife, and there's cracks in that marriage. And you can tell. You can tell. The way they are married, um, they've lived together for 30 years, got two sons, um, seem happy on the outside, but um, you can tell. There's, there's, a, there's a friction there. There's a friction there. Quite often I'll, I'll say to him, what are you doing later? He said, I'm very busy and, and my wife's working next to me. And he said, the things he says, I can, reading between the lines, I'm, I know what he means. He says, I don't know why you come here multiple times a day, every day for the last quarter of a century. That's my wife. I love my wife. I'm happily married to my wife. Sometimes she'll look over and raise her eyebrows because she knows there's something going on between me and him. A little bit of flirting. Anyway, he says, that's my, and I can read in between the line. And I say, say no more. I say, you've said, you've said, you know, you've said a million words. Yeah, you know, obviously, obviously I'm not, as I say, numbers are not my strong point, but I don't think it's a million. But he says, um, he says, we've been married, we've been married for 30 years. I love my wife, I love my family, I'll never leave her. And if I did, it wouldn't be for someone like you. And, uh, and uh, you know, I feel myself blushing, saying, repeating the words back to me. But um, I know what he means. <laughs> it's sort of, and then he's eyeing me up and down by, by not looking me in the eye, if that makes sense. He sort of, I know why he's putting the shutter down, because he's undressing me with my eyes. Taking one gone off at a time. He's off with the Debenhams blouse. He's off with the m and skirt. Um, quite often I go in there in me pretty poly tights. I go in the my PP tights, pretty poly. Yeah, and um, I'll hitch up his a little bit. Check my skirt a little bit. Not above the knee, not slut. Anyway, that was my morning, and it, and it, oh, goodness me, it was, um, goodness me, it's been a, it's been an absolute hectic one. Um, I've had a, I've had a lovely time this morning. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed myself. 
All right, I hope that um, if I see you down the post office, all right, get in touch. Don't be afraid to say hello. All right, um, well done, everyone. You've raised 350 pounds there. Well done. All right, and I'll, and I'll see you all soon. All right, take care. Bye-bye.